Look, everybody's right. saying basically the global markets, the local markets, a bit flat. Uh, there seems to be a retreat. There's a fear that with this uh, recent move into equities, um, so much activity on international markets, there's a fear that the markets are overheating. What's your sense? I mean, if you go back to March, it's interesting because if you go look at the market in, specifically in March, you see this massive low and you see the market selling down aggressively in a two-week period in March, two to three-week mm -hmm. period. And then you've got the market screaming back again to the levels that you, that you see now. And yes, there's been, there's been some jitters on the, along the way, but you've seen, you've seen a market just going up. Here to date, market's probably up in the order of about, uh, of, uh, you know, about 16%. Right. And I mean, that's on the back end of earnings so far this year, on average on the JSC all share right. being down by minus 10%. Right. And remember that um, I think that from a South African perspective, um, if, if, if one juxtaposes that relative to, to earnings that we've seen in the last four to five years where earnings have been up you know, continuously by 28%, you know, it's quite hard to swallow. It's obviously quite understandable that the market will take breathers along its way um, into, okay, into its bull phase. what about the broader indications of some sort of recovery? Here are the stats. China's exports and retail sales figures, factory output figures have improved. We know that their growth figures are also moving upwards from the revised 7% figure. We've seen a rebound in exports from Germany and Japan, which are number two and number three largest economies in the world, export-based. We're seeing UK retail sales figures and credit figures looking upwards. So everybody's saying these green shoots are real and the recession probably is nearing the end. You know, and even if they're not real, and even if this is only only the very, very starts of, 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 a, of a recovery, the market still offers great value today. The problem is people look at the kind of normal valuation type um, uh, matrices when they look at markets. And if you look at, for instance, the South African market, you look at dividend yield at the moment, it's sitting at 3.4%. And a lot of people look at 3.4% and say, well, look, it's slightly above its long-term average, but it's not very cheap anymore. Mm -hmm. But also earnings have dropped off. And if you normalize those earnings, you know, dividend yield could be far higher. Right. You know, it's probably another one to one and a half percent higher. And then it factors in absolutely no growth for the industry going right. forward. And you're quite correct. You probably have this bottoming out of data. And you know, if it takes an extra six months or 12 months, you know, shares aren't things that people should be owning over very short periods of time. Earnings, shares are things that people should be owning over long, long periods of time. Wealth creation. Because really speaking, yeah. you're buying a business. And if you're buying a business, you don't buy a business for six months. You yeah. know, you're in it for the long term. So it's not a casino, I think Titumbo anyone said. Let's Absolutely. talk about the yeah. state of the economy ahead of uh, an MPC meeting here in South Africa. Manufacturing figures were out. Uh, production remains weak. Uh, I think it's a drop of 17.1% was what the figures showed. The biggest offenders here, it seems to be that we're not getting production in iron ore and steel. We're not getting production in the automotive sector, in the petrochemical sector. What does that mean, broadly speaking? You know, South Africa, the, 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 the train that drives South African demand is, 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 is global demand. So we're not a, we, we, we need to export in order to turn GDP in South Africa. And if we export, we export commodities, which is a story not only for South Africa, but it's a story for Africa. Mm -hmm. It's other agricultural commodities, which I see as, as, as one, one, one and the same thing. Yeah. Um, we've had a massive slowdown as far as commodity spending is concerned internationally because of a global slowdown. And that is now slowly starting to pick up again. And as that slows, as it picks up, you've got this, this filtering through process right. back into the South African economy, which then filters down into normal demand and supply right. for, the, for the consumer in the street. So we're probably going to see that data remain weak for quite a right. period of time. But that in itself is a buying opportunity as the market becomes jittery right. about this recovery that it's, that it's okay, seen. And very briefly, uh, Titumbo, second last MPC meeting, markets and experts are calling for a 0.5 percent, uh, a 0.5 uh, percentage point uh, drop in the interest rate, but apparently the business cycle can't handle it at the moment. You, you need as much credit supply and people borrowing and people getting into the economy, but it's not translating into this. Rates are probably at a, at, a, at a reasonable level above inflation at the moment. You know, if you go back a month or two, um, rates were below inflation and inflation has now dropped and it's kind of got a reasonable level. If he wanted to cut more, I suppose he could. Um, and I, I suppose it's not his decision, I suppose it's an MPC decision mm -hmm. as he continuously uh, says, says to all of us. It's something that he could do, um, but it's something that, you know, at the end of the day, if it's, you know, it's, it's at a comfortable level. Why, why, why do it at this stage?